and grow. Mm. The entrepreneurs we have in our community battle with a number of things. They battle with governance, with risk, with financial management, etc. Mm. But the single thing I think all of them share is they battle with growth. It's just how do you keep a handle on stuff when you went from two people to 20 people to 200 people? Mm. What changes? So how, 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 what would you say to the entrepreneur watching this battling with growth? Sure, it's a big question. I could spend hours talking about managing growth. So if I try and distill it, the f so the first thing that I look for is a strong team. Sure. A team that you can depend on. Okay. So the most successful businesses are not one-man operations mm -hmm. with resources. They tend to be teams. They tend to be two, three, four people that together create stuff. As an entrepreneur, as a, as a one man, you always have blind spots and weaknesses that you don't deal with. So I know for myself, I love the building part, I love the visioning part, I love creating stuff. I'm not great at the structured admin stuff behind the scenes. Mm. So if you leave me on my own, I'm gonna charge ahead and have a whole lot of ideas and create stuff and things are gonna fall, fall behind somewhere else. So I generally have a strong finance or structured person with me um, I don't necessarily have strong marketing skills. Mm. So if you can find a team which has strong finance structuring, governance skills, someone who's the creator and someone who's got the marketing and building distribution, okay. then you have a strong team as a starting point. Mm. And you must feed off each other in that process. So if you look at the, the Apples, the Googles, the Amazons, they all had teams of people that, that started. The next thing I look for is distribution. How do you create distribution? So you need a customer value proposition. People get either get hung up on the tech, if they're a FinTech, yes. or they get hung up on the product. Yes. They yes. don't understand how to get to the market. Yes. And the market's critical. So if I wanna sell pens, but no one's using pens anymore, I've got a problem. Absolutely. I can have a great pen, but it's not gonna help me. So. Um, I mean, in our case with an RCS, we had we had a product people demanded. People had been needing credit for 2,000 plus years. So lending wasn't the problem. How do I get it to people in a format that's more convenient for them? And it's got to be significantly better. So mm -hmm. do I want to go stand in a branch in, and being intimidated by a, br a branch manager and take four weeks to get a decision? Or do I do it anonymously, over the phone, pre-qualified, so I've taken the fear of rejection already out the process. Got you, got you. Um, and it's delivered overnight by EFT to my bank account. Why would I not take your product? Sure, okay. sure. And then distribution-wise, when you're working with partners who already have a relationship and a brand association, it's hard starting from scratch without a brand. But if you can create brand association where there's a level of trust already, it just makes it infinitely easier. Why is, why is the brand important? So, it's funny in the, in the lending space because the lender's taking the risk, not the customer. This is it. But customers don't see it like that because they don't know what the pitfalls are. They don't know what the, the fine print says. They don't know what's going to happen if I don't pay. So there's actually a level of fear in taking credit. If the brand with whom I'm taking the credit is, is unfamiliar to is me. It's unfamiliar. I see. Whereas if I go and I'm now, I've had a card with Vashini for 10 years or 20 years, and Vashini come along and say, I'm going to grant you 10,000 rand credit, the cost is X, all those boxes have been ticked. Absolutely. I mean, there's a reason why people keep going to the spur, because they, they understand what they're going to get. Mm, mm, mm. It's interesting, right, that the consumer has a certain number of things that are wired into how he makes decisions, he or she makes decisions. Mm. And that sometimes as entrepreneurs, we don't consider that wiring. We just charge ahead with whatever it is that we want to do. Mm. So, so you answer the question around growth. You say distribution is important. The team is important. Yep. Uh, you mentioned the brand, which clearly is important. You've mm. not spoken about money here. You mean funding, to fund the growth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So funding tends to be, it's available if there's a need for it. I'm being a bit obtuse here, but so <laughs> I, I've never had a problem raising funding when I've got at least a pilot or a good concept or a good distribution or a good partner. Wow. 
Okay. So if I, when we started RCS, we had to put some of our own money in and we couldn't afford all of it. So we had to go knock on the banks to say, now, if I was an entrepreneur with, without Fashini as a partner in the venture, I wouldn't have got the money up front. Sure. But the fact that Fashini were buying in, the first question from the bank was, can we also buy equity? The bank wanted to buy into us before we'd started. Oh, wow. When we said, no, the, the equity's taken up, they said, okay, we'll fund you. So brand credibility is big. Good distribution model, critical. Uh, good customer value proposition, critical. Track record, critical. Mm. If you've got those four things, you're unlikely not to be able to find money. So you say money is a consequence of, exactly. not an input in. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Oh, there's, there, a, there's a key takeaway. Yeah. If you're starting from scratch with no track record, no brand, no anything, it's very hard to raise money. Then it's friends and family that you have to sure. find funding from. Sure. And you won't get debt in the early stages. People think they can borrow money. You can't borrow against something that doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but the funding part is actually the easier part to solve. Again, so how did you manage growth? Few people, then this thing grows. I mean, did you, did you, the entrepreneurs watching this, I can assure you, are having the sleepless nights. Mm. So they're worried about mm. the tasks that go undone, the emails that go mm. unanswered, the phone calls that don't get replied to by their people. Mm. And, and typically, a lot of the entrepreneurs we find are just in the, they're in that space where they're getting scale of opportunity, but mm. they don't have rigor of process. Mm. So I'm getting X thousand number of opportunities coming in, but my processes aren't rigorous enough that I can capitalize on all of these. And as a result, I'm just frustrated. I don't have mm. enough time, so I never catch up with myself. Did you, have you ever found yourself in that situation? If you have, how did you work your way out of it? So all the time. So when I look at a business, so for me, a business is a puzzle. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've, I've got a picture in my head and there are pieces that need to be fitted together. Mm -hmm. And I guess I probably had the experience having understood operations, understood finance, understood systems and how they all interact. Mm. Okay, so I've got a picture in my head of how it needs to be structured. If you find yourself as an entrepreneur chasing your tail every single day and fighting fires, it means you haven't thought through some of the longer term issues and put structures in place to, to support it. Yeah. Okay. So every night if you're lying awake about things that are failing, systems are a problem, this is a problem, that's a problem, you need to take a step back. And so when I got so the retail capital business I'm in now, when I got back involved, there was lots of crisis management. So there were always issues of systems being down or something happening. And you've got to step back and say, where do I need to invest? And what are the important components? Yeah. So the first thing, we needed growth. The growth, the distribution platform we had was limited. Yeah. So the first thing we looked at is said, how do we expand the product, yeah. create more lines of distribution, so we're not dependent on one channel. Yeah. So that was the first dot. Yeah. Secondly, why are we paper-based? <laughs> so we need to apply a bit more technology here. Right. So underwriting was paper-based. Right. People were filling in forms, they were couriering it to the office, right. we were capturing it, and we were back where we were in Fashini in 1994 with faxes coming out the fax machines. Right. Right. And we just said to the guys, two weeks, no paper. And in two weeks, that was the challenge. So you, you can put challenges into the team, whether it's yourself or, your, or people in your team, where you say to them, we will not have paper in two weeks' time. And two weeks later, we had 90% of the paper was, was removed. Unbelievable. They scanned it in, put it into a system, uh, and to digitize some of the stuff. Yeah, yeah. And it's amazing how people don't believe they can change, but when you set, the, set them a task and they change, and they believe they can change, change becomes easier and easier and easier. Got you. Down the track. Got you. So use technology to do some of those things. Um, Develop metrics, develop KPIs. Uh, so Jack Welsh from G will say, when he looks at a business, he analyzes the whole business, looks at all the metrics, he picks the three most important, and then he worries that to death. Oh, wow. Yeah. Just three? Just three. And in any business, there's generally not more than three important factors that are critical to your success. Yes. The rest is noise. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. So in our, wow. business, in our business, for instance, you know, if I look at my conversion rates, number of appointments made, margin, my maintained margin, there are only three or four things that are critical. 
And if I focus just on those three, I'll be successful despite the noise. <laughs> so simplify. I mean, it's a message you got to have. Simplify your business. All right. Because at the end of the day, you can't outtask everything, right? You can't. It needs to be a focus. All right. Yeah. When, we, when we come back, I want to have the conversation farther with Carl. But I then want to get into what Carl's doing now. And then a little bit about where, our, where his business is going, where the journey of this country is going. And most importantly, what you and I can uh, learn from him. Uh, don't go away. This is Osmosis. <laughs>